Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to get started right now. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and I want to talk about the differences between the different cameras you may hear about on the market today. So in front of me, I have different types of cameras, starting with a full frame camera and going all the way down to a cell phone. So let's look at the differences between the ones right here, right now. So a full frame camera means that it has a 35 millimeter sensor in the camera. If you remember back to the film days and 35 millimeter, the same size of a piece of film is the size of the sensor in this camera. They also tend to be more expensive. Now moving down the list, you have what's called a cropped sensor camera. Now cropped sensor is what you may commonly hear as an APS-C size sensor, and that is smaller, which means it tends to be less expensive than a full frame camera. Now there's pros and cons to both, and I will get to that in just a second. Now you also will hear a lot about what's called a mirrorless camera. Now this mirrorless camera in front of me right here has the same APS-C size sensor as you would find in this DSLR. Now let me explain the differences between DSLR and mirrorless simply by showing you inside this camera. You can see right here there is no mirror at all. The sensor is exposed right here to the environment. So now when we take off the front cap to this DSLR you can see there's a mirror there. In this case the mirror has to flip out of the way, a shutter goes up and it exposes the image sensor. There's pros and cons to both. Mirrorless cameras tend to be a little smaller. They also come in APS-C size sensor as well as full frame sensors. Of course, different prices for different size sensors. Now moving down, you will also hear about point and shoot cameras. Those are the things where you can't take the lenses off or change the lenses like you could do on these other cameras. Point and shoots tend to be anything from really inexpensive or like this one in front of me right here. This is a thousand dollar point and shoot because it has a one inch sensor. Point and shoot cameras can have sensors that range from one inch or smaller to APS size C as well as full frames, but of course, Different size sensors means different priced cameras. Now I think that a lot of you out there have a cell phone in your pocket right now, which means you have a mirrorless camera with you at all times. This is my iPhone. This in essence is a mirrorless camera. Now you may say, well what size sensor is in there? A really small one. The smaller the sensor, the less light you're able to bring in to that image sensor. Whereas with an FX camera, you're gathering a lot more light because the sensor is much larger. Now with the larger sensors, you tend to be able to push your ISO to much further places, much higher. So when you get into something like your cell phone, the higher the ISO you go, the less quality you may get from that image. But with that said, I want to remind you that you can get great results with any size sensor out there on the market. If you understand composition and exposure, remember it's you, not the camera, that gets the best results. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is what is the largest print I can make from this camera? And the truth of the matter is, is if you get your exposure and your composition spot on, you can make a big ass print from just about any camera out there in the world. Also, one of the friends to making a big ass print is light. If you're shooting in a brighter situation, you have a better opportunity and a better chance to get a larger type of print because you're not pushing the ISO as far. But we can save a lot of that information for future videos. This one is just explaining the differences between the sensor sizes that you will find out on the market as well as the terminologies from full frame to FX to DX to mirrorless to point and shoots all of the different things, so I hope that helped you guys out, but what I want to let you know is if you would like the quickest way to get out of auto, to get fantastic results and great photos, no matter what camera you have, I created the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto, which you can check out a free preview right now at fronosphoto.com guide. Watch that free preview, pick up the guide, because I think it's going to help you quickly get the results you've always wanted to get, and that's it. Thank you for watching Jared Polin, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Subscribe now.
Watch this, watch this video.